What's going on YouTube? Hope you've all been well. I know it's been a while since I posted my last upload, but that's because this video has taken so damn long to make. So I hope you guys enjoy this. This is how to build your own e-bike battery. So we're starting from scratch here. We're gonna talk to you about sourcing batteries, um, spot welding, soldering, wiring up a BMS, um, about uh, batteries, battery testing, um, we're even going to uh, design and print a case for these batteries here. The, the files will be in the description. Um, and this is going to fit right into our high long battery bracket. And that's the one that comes with your Bafang conversions. That's what we did in the last video is we made this uh, DIY e-bike. This is the uh, Bafang BBSO2B. Um, so we walk you through the full guide of how to build it. So please check that out. Like and subscribe. And I'm excited for this video because this one took a long time to make. So let's jump right into it without further ado. Step one, sourcing batteries. Now, honestly, half the battle is finding 18650 batteries. I mean, there can be a lot of fakes online or, uh, you know, customs, clearances you have to worry about. Um, it's not the easiest thing, but I, I went the route of marketplace um, for cost. They were much cheaper than buying new. I think I picked up my batteries were like $1.25 a piece. Luckily, I found this guy who was selling a bunch of these uh, packs. I believe they were from like a medical device that had to be changed every, you know, number of years. And uh, a few of them were actually full of Samsung cells, which was nice. Uh, but most of them were Sanyo. So each battery has a code on it, right? And, and you'll look up that code for the... Uh, this d data sheet here, specification data sheet. And there's information you want on here to see if this battery is suitable for your, for your project. So one of those is capacity. There's what I've got highlighted. So these are about, uh, you know, 2.5 amp hours capacity. You also want to check the charge current. And uh, of course you want to check the continuous or max continuous discharge current. Um, because, you know, that will be, tell you if it's suitable for your project or not. So here I've got a mock battery drawn up in Fusion 360, just to show you the configuration of what we're gonna be doing here. So we've got the positive terminal here with the little button top, and then we've got the negative terminal right beside it. So you can see these batteries are just staggered, one up, one down. And you can also see that we've got a row from right to left here of batteries that are hooked up in parallel connection. So parallel means the positive to positive and negative to negative. So the voltage stays the same obviously, but the current adds up, right? And then if you look lengthwise, we've got batteries hooked up in series configuration. So series configuration would be from the positive one to the negative of the next and so on. So that, adds up the voltage, but the, the current and capacity stays the same. And we can see that each of these cells can output 5.2 amps continuously, max discharge rate. So if we do a four parallel configuration and that would stack the current output and keep the voltage the same, then we can take uh, 5.2 continuous discharge current amps and times it by four parallel, which would give us 20.8 continuous amps discharge. And if we recall that power equals voltage times current, and we know that our voltage will be 48 volts, we can take 48 volts times 20.8 continuous discharge current amps, and then that will give us our power of our battery, which would be 998.4 watts. Now, do remember that our motor is rated for 750 watts, but it can actually handle much higher, like 1400 watts peak power. So technically we are not maximizing the capability of our motor since our battery can't output the maximum wattage that our e-bike can handle. All right, now I'm sorry to bore you to death. Let's move on to step two. And here we're gonna test the batteries that we picked up. This step is very, very important. So I'm using a Lido Cala charger here. And this charger is special because it can charge your batteries up and then it uses a resistor to drain your batteries. And it gives you a screen reading of the actual capacity of your batteries. And then it'll charge them back up to full charge. Um, so you, you want to, that's what I have written down on the batteries here is their milliamp hour capacity. 
So record the values and then it'll charge them back up to full. And then I left them for a week and that's what you can see here I'm doing. I'm coming back and I'm testing the voltage and I'm looking for any batteries that have lost voltage over the week. You also want to look for batteries that have visual cues of batteries that heat up during charging or heat up during discharging excessively. Now you can also use something like this to test your batteries. This gives you a valuable metric because this can test for something called internal resistance. However, units like this I've heard are not very reliable with each different cartridge showing a different internal resistance for even the same battery. And sometimes even testing the same battery twice will give you different internal resistance. Now, the more you spend, obviously you get what you pay for. So you can check out something like this. This is a valuable thing to check because one battery with high internal resistance will pretty much render your whole pack, um, your whole battery pack to be quite limited. There is a method where you can check internal resistance using a resistor and this formula. So if you check the voltage of the battery with no load and then apply a known resistor, you can use this formula to check the internal resistance. And of course, like I didn't want to spend more money on this project. It already cost me a lot of money and time, but this is definitely something I would recommend. Alrighty, now moving on to step three, we're going to assemble our battery. So I went but with this plastic structure here. You can pick these up pretty cheap online. I would definitely recommend using something like this. You definitely don't want to hot glue gun your batteries together. It's not good for them with the heat. Um, I like this one because it was square, so it would make the spot welding easier. You can go with something like this, and that's what I'll use in my next build, where you can get a more compact kind of diagonal fit. Um, that's definitely good for cramming a lot of batteries into a small space, but it made a spot welding a little harder. So just decided to keep it simple. So now I'm going to really clean off all the nickel strips that was previously on the batteries. You want these terminals really clean, right? So your, your nickel strips, your plated nickel lies really flat and that's going to assist in spot welding. So here I'm just putting them in one row up, one row down, and then I'm just compressing it all down. This stuff is super easy and there's even cutouts for the little spot weld. So moving on, let's go on to step four. Here's where we're actually gonna spot weld the batteries together. So here's where you actually need to start being careful because now is when stuff can actually start to get dangerous. So here I'm making some of the first spot welds. I'm using a little battery powered spot welder. As you can see right here, I'm just putting in some spot welds. I was spot welding up the parallel packs here and then now I'm doing the series connections. Take note that I labeled quite clearly the bottom of the battery and the top. And then also note that I also labeled um, 1 to 13. So organization is really huge at this stage of the game. If you connect two batteries together that aren't supposed to be connected and create a short circuit, this can be very dangerous. So really pay attention to organization here. This little glass Ikea table came in so handy here because I could look right through it and see my tablet. Now here's a product that you're supposed to put on top of the positive terminals, which just gives the battery a little more protection from shorting out to the negative, which is actually pretty close to it. I skipped on using these because they were taking forever to ship, but I do recommend using those. It just adds that added layer of protection. And there was even one point in my build where I got a little sloppy doing this over and over and actually had a bit of a short. And that all could have been prevented just by using these stickers, right? This on the right here is an option of a different spot welder. Now this one connects to a car battery and it's on its way. I'll be posting a video about this to see how it works. I believe that something like this should have a little more power. And my spot welder that I used was good, but I feel like it could be better. All right, moving on, let's go to step five. Now we're actually gonna wire in the BMS. So the BMS is a battery management system and it controls that batteries don't get too high charge or too low charge. Since we obviously have many batteries in this, it controls each one. It's kind of like the brain of the entire battery, managing things like temperature, cut off, cut in, etc. So here you can see I'm trying to wire in the anode or cathode of the BMS, the main negative or main positive, I should say. And this was that bus bar I was talking about, how I was trying to fold the nickel strips around it and then feed solder in, which wasn't the best idea. So now here's a wiring diagram. 
on the right and you have to wire in the individual leads in between the series connections. So here's a closer diagram. It looks a little complicated, but it's really not that complicated once you, once you take your time. Um, so now after all the leads were wired in, I was just applying some Kapton tape and here I'm just testing before I actually plug it in that I actually wired these right. So if you test it, each lead, when you go to the next in series, next in line, I should say, it should increase by one nominal voltage, which would be about 3.6 volts. So just to finish up the wiring, I added this XLR connector, I believe it's called, and an XT60 connector so I can connect it to my bike. Now here's a little close up of the BMS I used. It was a Jayabada, I think you say, or a JBD. I was gonna cheap out on a BMS and then somebody on a Facebook group recommended that I get one of these and said they were really good. And so far I like it, it's been great. And there's an app support so I can look inside and see exactly what's happening with the state of my battery. No complaints as of yet. Now we're approaching step six of this whole process. We're gonna build the case. So I'm getting kind of tired of this project. It's been a lot of work. I could have made it easy on myself, but nope, I had to print the case. So I picked up this Creality Ender 3 S1 on Marketplace, pretty cheap, and I went to start teaching myself Fusion 360. So this was after many designs. This actually took quite a lot of work, a lot of prototypes, more than you see in this video. And then I had to cut it up into sections and, and print it uh, so it fits together like Lego. Now here's an epic fail. This is how exactly not to prototype. That was in my very early days. That took 53 hours. So here was a, a little edit I had to do on the front of the case when I found out that it wouldn't actually fit inside my bicycle. I had to go back and kind of put a little indent in the battery there and it's just printing up here. So now it actually fits in the, in the frame of my bicycle. And then I'm gonna glue these together and it's gonna fit something like this. So I still had to figure out how I was gonna connect them. I had printed these modules before I had learned how to do the, the screw with the threaded insert nested into my prints. And even still, I find those a little finicky. It's hard to get the, the threads going in perfectly straight so that the screw can go in correctly. Um, but I went with this little inlet design that you just put a zip ties through. It doesn't look as nice, but it works pretty well. It would be cool on the next build to have uh, threaded inserts though and screws holding it together. That would look very professional. So this is just some fish tape. It's like a hardish tape and it adds some kind of impact protection to the battery. I was just trying to focus on the BMS. There's some wires up there that'll get a little compressed. And then here's some heat shrink. You can purchase this online. A good method is you just wrap a string around your battery and then you measure that and that'll give you kind of the diameter. Now I didn't have a heat gun and I also didn't have gloves apparently. Um, so I was using my stove and you know, it actually worked pretty well. You know, make do with what you have. When my hand started to burn, I knew it was probably too hot for the battery. Alrighty, so now I'm just trying to get it all packed into the case. Of course it didn't fit, so I had to print that end again, and I'm just having so much fun with this project. If you can't tell from the sarcasm in my voice. And let's fit it all together. I have little cutouts here. I have to solder in the XLR connector charger. I also have a little digital display that shows me the level of charge. So got these helping hands. They showed up on this morning, so it was perfect timing. Just soldering these up. I thought I sucked at soldering, but then I went out and I actually purchased higher quality solder and uh, that made a world of difference. Popping in the little LED display here and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Shows the percent charge and also the voltage. So this was my method for how I was gonna connect the modules together instead of having screws, which would be more ideal. I just kind of use these like little inlets here with zip ties. This way, I, if I ever need to, you know, do some maintenance on the battery, I can open it up relatively easily. It doesn't look the best, but it's serviceable. And these are included in the 3D print file in the description of the video. All you have to do is print them out and then drill a little hole in the module right next to it. And you should be able to zip tie them together pretty strongly. So here you can see me just fitting the battery onto the bracket. So once again, this is the high long bracket. This is the one that comes with your Bafang kit. Um, so the fit is perfect, it's very secure. I'm very happy with it. And honestly, very happy to have this over with. There were so many prototypes, so much printing. And uh, once again, the design, the file is in the description. So check that out and print away.
All right, everyone, thank you so much for watching. I know this was a long one, a lot of detail, um, so I appreciate you if you got this far. Um, if you guys hit the like and subscribe, I really appreciate it. I'm trying to grow this channel and uh, really helps out the algorithm. Um, I'm quite happy to have this project over with. This one took so much time. It was fun, but man, it was a lot of work. Um, so in the future on this channel, we'll be doing some tests on this battery. So if you stick around for that, um, we're also maybe doing a makeover on this bike to make it look a little cooler. We'll see what we can do. And also we're going to be testing out that spot welder. So once again, guys, thank you so much for the support. Really appreciate it. Hope you all have a great day. Take care, everyone. Bye.